So we're in Atlantic City, right in front of Boardwalk Hall, and we want to find out how these candidates would impact Southern New Jersey if they were elected governor. Well, Southern New Jersey has become a topic of conversation among the candidates. They have spent a lot of time talking about South Jersey while in North Jersey, while in <laughs> Central Jersey. They haven't necessarily been here talking about the problems that we have here. They've been talking about um, Atlantic City gambling, whether to bring gambling elsewhere in the state. Um, and they've also been talking about places like Camden, into, you know, which became an example of educational failure. Chris Christie's up 10 plus points right, in the right. polls mm -hmm. in August, yeah. and something changes. Right. You know, let's talk about how Corzine was able to erase a, a 10 point deficit <laughs> in, in two and a half months. Well, Corzine owes Barack Obama dinner because in August, um, we understand that the White House actually Became, was looking at the numbers, um, like I said, one of the only competitive races happening in this cycle, and they saw it was not going the way they wanted it to go. Since then, they really um, tried to carve out some very clear points um, for Corzine's campaign to make. They, um, Corzine started hitting Christie very, very hard on a health policy that, he, that Christie had mooted, which would basically offer mandate-free health policies for things like mammograms. New Jersey has a large number of mandates that are required to be covered in every health insurance policy that the, the state, any company in the state writes. A lot of those services are ones that would not be needed by your daughter, more likely than not. My cancer was originally discovered by a mammogram. The mandate-free plan opens the door for all kinds of abuses. My mom was a breast cancer survivor. Her life was saved because she got a mammogram. The reality is that this would still be a policy that somebody could choose to buy or not buy. You can always increase your coverage, decrease your coverage, and it, it, was, a, it was a little bit simplified um, in order to make a political point by mm -hmm. the, the Corzine campaign. So that's where we suddenly found ourselves talking about mammograms, like they were a, a political hot, hot potato, and uh, Christy really struggled to get out from underneath that. One of the interesting things about this race has been the fact that you have an independent candidate mm -hmm. in the mix of things. Right. Talk about the party backing versus independent and, and really what that means for New Jersey's voting landscape. You've actually got more registered independents than you have um, registered for either other party. So they are the middle, they are the battleground. And in any election, you've got uh, candidates going after their attention, trying to find the issues that matter to them. And that's usually what happens is there's sort of a tug of, you know, backwards and forwards between the Democrat and the Republican who um, try and appear moderate in, in sort of the middle and appeal to that middle base. In this race, uh, we had Chris Daggett arrive. There's no, there's no denying that Daggett changed the race. There's no denying that Daggett changed what um, the race has been about for New Jersey. We got into a, I mean, it's been, it's been a better race in many ways for the presence of Daggett. 